It's been 11 years, and the time's come to decommission our first Vantage Pro 2 weather station. Now, I've seen its better days, and you can see it's the worst for wear, but with that being said, this thing has been rock solid. Admittedly, I've neglected the regular maintenance of the unit, but the weather station has just kept going. Welcome to our first video of what I hope to be a three or four part video series covering the installation of a Davis Vantage Pro 2 Plus wireless weather station. Now I'm going to be replacing an existing Vantage Pro 2 system that was initially installed over 11 years ago. Now for this first video we're going to cover exactly what you get when you order a new system and I'll also point out the differences and enhancements of the new system over our original system. So let's get started. I purchased the new weather station from weathershack.com and it's a model 6163. Now this model includes a UV and temperature sensor up here at the top and a fan aspirated radiation shield down at the bottom. Now the fan aspirated radiation shield provides higher accuracy when measuring temperatures by providing a constant flow of air over the temperature sensor. Now just looking at the overall sensor suite compared to what I have today, and this is quite a bit larger. There are several differences here. Um, the first is the rain collector. This is the rain collector from our original 2008 weather station. It is just a basic cylindrical shape that funnels precipitation into the measuring buckets that are within the weather station. That's it. Pretty basic, but there is a problem. In this picture, you can see the funnel at the bottom with debris clogging the hole. In this case, it looks to be mouse feces, but I've already examined it more than I care to. And this is the problem that I mentioned before. In this design, there is no filter to prevent debris from clogging the funnel. And a large percentage of the time, I find that it's birds that actually cause the issue. They'll land on the top of the funnel and leave their mark on the inside. It's kind of gross. But I believe the next upgrade in this design, you know, while the cylinder retained its shape, Davis added bird spikes to the top of the funnel to prevent birds from landing there. The documentation I found also mentioned the introduction of a debris screen that prevented anything, once inside the funnel, from clogging the hole. Now for our new weather station. You can see the shape of the collector has changed entirely and is now completely funnel shaped. Around the top of the collector, you can also plainly see the bird spikes. In this close-up, you're also able to see the debris shield at the bottom. Now this seems to be quite substantial and should really help out with the clogged rain collectors. I tell you, there are not too many things that are worse than sticking your hand in a rain collector that's full of cold water just so you can dig out bird or mouse residue. Ew. The next piece that I noticed different is the solar panels. The original sensor suite doesn't have this lower panel at all. It just has this solar panel on the transmitter shield itself. Now we can open up this transmitter shield just by lifting up and pulling out. Now you want to be careful when you do this because there's a connector for the solar panel and you don't want to pull that off with force. This is the inside of the transmitter module. At the top of the box you can see the battery. This battery will power the sensor suite at night when the unit is not receiving power from either of the solar panels. Now after installing the unit, the battery tab will be removed. At the bottom you can see five RJ11 connectors that are used to connect the five sensors. From left to right, these sensors are UV, solar radiation, rain, wind, and the temperature and humidity sensor. You will notice that the connector for the wind sensor is empty. When the anemometer is mounted close to the sensor suite, you would connect the provided cable to that port. Another item I'd like to talk about is the anemometer. Now, this looks nearly identical to the one that I have today with one exception, the wind vane. This is the wind vane from our original weather station. Now, it appears faded, but this is due to being outside for 11 years. You will also notice that the tip is plastic. This makes it noticeably lighter than the latest version. This is the wind vane from our new weather station. Notice the brass tip on the end. With the extra weight that this provides, you can get a feel for the additional stability that it would provide in windy conditions. Now you've probably noticed that the anemometer also comes with a bundle of cable. Now this gives you a little bit of flexibility in how you mount the anemometer. On the current system, I've actually got it mounted above the sensor suite, about 12 inches. 
Uh, there are some other mounting possibilities that we'll go over in later videos. Um, and I'm a little concerned about being able to mount this on the pole with the sensor suite. But again, that's something that we'll talk about here in a later video. The other piece is this additional, um, the remote sensor module. Now this is something that I purchased a few years back, never got around to installing on my original system, but I'm hoping to use it on this one. And for meteorological installations, the wind sensor should be placed at least 33 feet above the ground and seven feet above you know, any building rooftops or trees that may be around. I've got some options around here and that's something that we're gonna look at. I don't know what I'm gonna get into. I'm hoping to be able to use this, but we'll have to see. Now the next piece I wanna talk about is the data logger. Now this didn't come included with the weather station and I had to purchase it separately. But this is the piece that actually connects to the weather console and allows you to connect it to your server. Now, I do keep all of my data on my server and not any of the cloud services. Uh, this is my personal choice. And when we talk about this in later videos, that's the approach we're gonna use. So if you're watching these videos in the hopes of learning a little bit more about their cloud services, we're not gonna be covering that. Now, the next piece is the data console. Now, this appears to be identical to the one I'm using today. Um, it connects to the sensor suite wirelessly and displays your weather data right on the front screen here. Now the data logger will plug into the back of the system and that's what connects it to your server. And yeah, um, doesn't look to be much of a surprise here. Now the next piece is just uh, kind of an accessory bag here. Now this includes mounting equipment. Um, we do have a couple options when mounting the sensor suite. We can either mount it on a flat surface, such as the surface of a 4x4 pole, or we can mount it on a round metal pole. Um, the mounting hardware is in here for both applications, so you just need to choose the one that best suits your needs, and all of this is included. Now the last piece here is the instructions. I would highly recommend that you go through these yourself, follow the instructions, and that'll just get you the best possible installation and ensure accurate measurements. In our next video, we will cover the physical installation of our new weather station. I hope you liked this video and was able to learn something about the Vantage Pro 2 Plus wireless weather stations. If you did, like and subscribe. Stick around for the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.